Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in today for your word for the day. Uh, I'm excited to continue our look at the book of Judges as we've been going through these 12 judges that God sent over his people to lead and guide his people through this season. And and what's interesting is uh, we're going to start looking at the story of Samson and without getting too far ahead of it. Uh, Samson is the last of the 12 judges uh, in the book of Judges. But what's so unfortunate is the downward spiral that we see as there is more sin, more uh, rebellion against God's desires, and not just from the people that these judges are leading, but even in the the judges themselves. Because some of these judges we've looked at are incredible and have done great things, and others not so much. Uh, And we're unfortunately going to see more of that in Samson. So we're going to be looking at some of Judges chapter 13 today, and this is going to kick off uh, the next five episodes looking at the story of Samson. So if you are catching a later episode and I told you to come back and watch this one, thank you. If you are watching this for the very first time today and there is no rerun, thank you for watching still. So let's take a look at the first few verses of Judges chapter 13. It says this, the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord again. Uh, So the Lord gave them to the hand of the Philistine for 40 years. So for 40 years, they are now under the rule of the Philistines. These are the, the, the enemies of God's people for so long now. And there's so much uh, that the Philistines bring as a negative and suffering for them. But for 40 years, they are suffering. For 40 years, they're under the rule of the Philistines. Likely not a good situation. We're not told a lot of details in this passage, but not a good situation. It continues, verse 2. There's a certain man of Zorah named from the tribe of Danites whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are barren and have not borne children. As if she didn't know this. She's like, yeah, I know. That's the story of my life, right? But you shall conceive and bear a son. There's the plot twist. He said, Therefore, be careful and do not drink wine or strong drink and eat nothing unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head, for he shall, for the child shall be a Nazarite. We'll come back to that in just a minute. Uh, who shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and shall begin to save Israel from the hands of the Philistines. And the woman came and said to her husband, A man of God came, and his appearance was like uh, an angel of the Lord, very awesome. And I did not ask him his name or where he should come from, but he said to me, You shall conceive and bear a son. So then drink no wine or strong drink and eat nothing unclean, for the child should be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. And so we've got an an incredible uh, moment in history here where for 40 years God's people have been suffering and God sends an angel to declare to an unlikely family that their child is going to be the one who delivers God's people from the hand of the Philistines. Now, uh, a few things just off the bat here. I can't help but notice some of the correlation and and some of the patterns that God uses throughout the story of his scripture. Unlikely births to unlikely people in unlikely ways. It's it's amazing how God works and does that. But there's also something really important here, not just the, the announcement of Samson and the fact that he's come to save the people of God from the hand of the Philistines. And that phrase, he will save the people from the Philistines is going to be important. But also the instructions that, that uh, Mendoa's wife received, Samson's mom. She, she's told, hey, don't drink any wine or strong drink. Don't eat anything unclean. And by the way, don't give your son a haircut because he, he's going to be a Nazarite. Now, what's that mean? Well, in Numbers chapter 6, God establishes there's a, there's a special vow that God's people can take to set themselves apart for the purposes of God in, in different ways. And it's called a Nazarite vow. And as you might expect, there are three conditions. During this period of time that you're under this Nazarite vow, you're not to drink wine or strong drink or eat any vine type thing. So no grapes or uh, any related items there. Um, Secondly, you're not to eat uh, anything unclean, which is actually a part of everything. But more specifically, you're not to go near a dead body. Um, Again, the the passages do not go near a dead body, not touch them, but don't even go in the vicinity. This will be important later. And again, if you're watching a rerun of this, this is why you're here. The third thing is don't cut your hair. 
Um, so no shaving, no cutting of hair. Uh, and this is from birth, the vow that, that Samson was under. God uh, ordains him as part of his purpose to go lead the people uh, and save them from the hand of the Philistines. He is to carry out these three conditions. We're going to watch those three conditions as we work through the life of Samson and see what that means. But what's this mean for us today? Well, a couple of things. One, God cares about his people. You got to imagine that there were people during those 40 years that were wondering, does God even care about us? And maybe not some of them since they were doing what was evil on the side of the Lord and they maybe didn't care about God. But the people that did were wondering, is God still around? Does God hear our prayers? Does God hear the concerns and cries that we have? Yes, he does. It doesn't always work in the time that we wish, but he hears and cares about us. Secondly, we see that God works in ways that might seem mysterious to us, but are so powerful and wonderful in his own way. But third, God cares about your life. God cares about the life of everyone and gives them a special purpose. Last week, I shared this in my sermon, but Ephesians 2.10 says, For you are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We see that in the life of Samson here, that before he's even born, he is designed with a purpose and a plan for his life, for him to go walk in. But so are you. It may not be to go uh, save your nation from the hand of the Philistines, uh, but it is to do good works which God has prepared beforehand for you to walk in. So let me ask you today, are you walking in the plans and purposes that God has for you? Are you pursuing knowledge and information about what those plans and purposes are? Or are you just living for your own plans and purposes? Because as we're going to see through the life of Samson, but pretty much any other time we look at Scripture or even our own life, when we walk in God's plans and purposes for us, our life is richly blessed. But when we walk in our own plans and purposes, we eventually find disappointment and letdown and resentment, knowing that there's something so much better for us. So let me encourage you today to go pursue, read God's word, and get to know him, and go seek what his plans and purposes for your life are. Have a great day, Calvary. Hope you tune in for the next four episodes as we look at the story of Samson. See you tomorrow.